In the city of Moscow, young Yulia feels rather lonely because she misses her dead mother and her father Valentin is almost never home because he works for the army. One morning at school, the teacher tells the class about an incoming meteor shower and only the nerd Gleb knows the answers to his questions. Yulia prefers to gossip with her girlfriend Svetlana, who has tickets for an incoming concert. However Svetlana is disappointed to see that after class, Yulia leaves with her friend Tayoma instead of her. Later at home, Yulia asks Valentin for permission to watch the meteor shower, but Valentin forbids it for the sake of her safety. Furious, Yulia calls Tayoma, who convinces her to disobey her dad because this is a once-in-a-lifetime event. Moments later, Tayoma picks Yulia up and they join the crowd that is gathering on the streets. Suddenly a crazy driver passes by in his sports car and almost causes an accident. Tayoma approaches the car when it stops and breaks the mirror to then hit the driver, which causes the co-pilot to get angry. At that moment Tayoma's gang shows up as backup, scaring the drivers into not fighting after all. Svetlana also shows up and reveals she has the keys to the roof of her apartment building for a better view, so Yulia and Tayoma join her up there. While waiting for the shower to start, Tayoma gets bored quickly and drags Yulia to Svetlana's room to get frisky while Svetlana stays behind watching the meteors. Meanwhile out in space, an alien spaceship is seen traveling through our solar system. When the meteor shower begins, one of the meteors hits the spaceship and causes it to start failing and enter Earth's atmosphere. The Russian military thinks it'll crash on their cities and immediately launches missiles to try to make it explode before impact. Unfortunately it doesn't work and the ship crashes in Moscow, where it destroys several buildings. Svetlana instantly dies when the ship hits her building and her room loses half of its structure, causing Yulia to almost fall. Luckily Tayoma catches her just in time. Once the ship finally stops moving, the military immediately begins evacuating the city, and Tayoma runs through the streets with Yulia in his arms until the cops accept to take her to the hospital. The army discusses the issue and sends some soldiers to make first contact, including Valentin and a scientist. With several shooters placed on neighboring roofs just in case, Valentin and his companion find a mechanical-looking alien and try to communicate with it. The alien seems to understand their welcoming words and speaks back in an unknown language that somehow Valentin manages to understand anyway, but it gives the scientist a panic attack. Moments later, Valentin informs the higher-ups that the aliens just want to fix their ship and leave, so they should be left alone. Some soldiers think they should destroy the ship before the aliens change their minds, but Valentin convinces them to be patient since their shooting first is what caused the crash in the first place. While newscasts all over the world cover the incident, Yulia wakes up in a hospital and learns about Svetlana's death when she finds her earbuds. The TV in the room shows that her father is in charge of leading an operation that is building a protective structure around the spaceship. The doctor tells her it's okay for her to go, and Yuli finds Tayoma waiting for her outside. He tries to take her home, but Valentine arrives and takes her himself. He's thankful that Tayoma saved his daughter's life but he also points out that she wouldn't have been in danger in the first place if it wasn't for Tayoma's invitation. On their way home, Yulia sees anti-alien graffiti on the streets, and her dad refuses to answer her questions. At the apartment, Yulia learns her grandmother Lubov will be taking care of her because as always, her father is too busy with work. Schools are still opening despite the crash and the school bus is replaced by an actual tank. In the corridor, Yulia sees Svetlana's memorial, which makes her mood worse. The teacher tries to point out how important it is to have made contact with aliens and that they don't know the full story. However Yuli is furious because she blames the aliens for having killed their friends and family, not to mention the army isn't doing anything. In the end she's so upset that she leaves the class, and the others follow her. Sometime later, Yulia steals her father's gun from his safe and goes to see Tayoma at the hideout where he hangs out with his gang. The guys don't like seeing a girl in their hideout and almost start a fight, but Tayoma immediately reminds them Yulia is his girl and they must respect that. Today the group is spreading negative comments about aliens on social media just to troll, and Yulia takes advantage to ask them to help her get revenge for Svetlana's death. The gang loves the idea and approaches an old abandoned building, which has a secret entrance that they cross to arrive at the quarantine zone. Tayoma tells Yulia to wait in a car because it's dangerous, but after the boys are gone, Yulia leaves the car anyway and goes to the ruins of Svetlana's apartment. While the boys find a weird shield-like object inside a shop, Yulia finds both sadness and comfort in her girlfriend's belongings, only to suddenly be startled when she finds an alien in the room. She tries to shoot at it, but the bullets bounce off the alien armor. Then she tries to run away and almost falls off the building, but the alien immediately catches her to save her life. For a brief moment, Yulia swears she can see a human face inside the armor. The alien tries to communicate, but at that moment the gang arrives and begins hitting the creature, causing it to slip and fall into the shop. The group rushes to check on it and discovers that the metal thing is an exoskeleton, and the blood stains indicate the aliens that wear them are human-like. Yulia notices that among a pile of bodies, the alien is pretending to be a dead man too, and she decides to keep the secret because he saved her. Then the group leaves the area taking the exoskeleton with them, but leaving the mysterious object behind. When the army arrives, they take the shield for themselves. After hiding the armor in the hideout, the gang goes home, but Yulia can't sleep and decides to go back to Svetlana's building. 
she finds the alien unconscious because of blood loss through a big wound and after wrapping him up in plastic, he takes him away in her car. In the morning, Yulia contacts Gleb because he's studying medicine, and he accepts to help. Gleb takes a look at the alien and points out that his anatomy is human-like enough to be treated with human means, meaning the alien needs a transfusion for all the blood he lost. Yulia calls a friend of her father's and uses that connection to get a private room in the hospital. The teens sneak inside and Gleb does a blood test to discover the alien has the same blood group as Yulia, so she can help with the transfusion. When Gleb ends up fainting because he's too nervous, Yulia does the transfusion herself, which immediately helps the alien feel better. In fact the alien wakes up for a few seconds and transfers his metal bracelet to Yulia before falling unconscious again. Afterward, they hide the alien in Yulia's garage and Gleb promises to keep the secret because he obviously has a crush on her. Then Yulia goes home and takes a shower when suddenly the water begins moving around her wrist. Yulia discovers the bracelet can control water, with which she has fun for a while. Meanwhile the soldiers bring the shield-like object to their base and begin investigating it, quickly learning that it can control water too. Speaking of water, a fisherman's shocked to discover that the river that passes near the spaceship has been completely drained, and the military scientists arrive at the conclusion that the spaceship is using Earth's water to fix its damage. The higher-ups are starting to see this as an attack, and Valentin has a long argument with them to convince them to give him more time. Some time later, Yulia goes back to the garage because the alien has woken up. Speaking perfect Russian, he introduces himself as Hawken and explains he left the ship to look for a device called Shilk. Yulia allows him to borrow some clothes before kicking him out, so Hawken leaves alone, and Gleb makes Yulia feel guilty about it. When Hawken tries to re-enter the quarantine zone, the patrolling officers see him and immediately arrest him, which is seen by Yulia from afar. Meanwhile Tayoma's gang is inspecting the exoskeleton and discovers human tools can't damage it, in fact the few marks they manage to make instantly repair themselves when they touch water. One of the guys ends up activating the armor by mistake, which puts him in agonizing pain. An argument ensues about what to do with it, and they decide the military should take it. Tayoma tries to call Valentin, but since he's busy, the call is ignored. Deciding to speak to him in person, Tayoma and the gang drive to the base and find it surrounded by a furious crowd that is demanding more water because the ration supply isn't enough. One of the protesters throws a rock at a soldier to start a riot, and the soldiers think the gang is involved, so they begin hitting them as more soldiers arrive to control the crowd. Tayoma puts his friends in the car and sends them away but he stays to try to convince the civilians to go away because it isn't worth the trouble. The soldiers end up arresting Tayoma anyway, and by the time Valentin arrives to see what's going on, Tayoma has lost faith in the army and decides not to give them the exoskeleton after all. At the police station, Hawkins sees on the news that the military has the shield-like object, which turns out to be the shilk he's looking for. While the officers are confused because Hawkins' hand doesn't have fingerprints, Yulia arrives and uses the fact she's a colonel's daughter to be allowed inside. She immediately bails Hawkins out, but when she sees Tayoma and tries with him too, Tayoma gets angry and turns her down because she doesn't want any favors from the military dogs. Hawkins leaves the station with Yulia and explains that he needs the shilk to be able to return to his planet, so Yulia decides to use her dad for help. When they arrive at the military base, the guard doesn't let her pass because Valentin's busy, so Yulia lies and says she's pregnant. When the message gets to Valentin, he immediately drops his work to meet her, and he thinks Hawken may be the father. Yulia plays with a lie to get closer to her dad, comforting him with a hug to steal his access card. Then she gives it to Hawken and while Yulia distracts Valentin with an argument about her pregnancy, Hawken goes to look for the shilk. After stealing some scientist's clothes to disguise himself, Hawken sneaks into the laboratory where they're analyzing the shield-like object and with just one touch, he manages to open it and retrieve the shilk. By the time the scientists finally realize that hadn't been Valentin and trigger the alarm, Hawken has ditched the costume and is already reuniting with Yulia at the parking lot, where Valentin orders a soldier to drive them home. Meanwhile Tayoma is released from jail and meets with his friend to start organizing a riot. They reinforce their car, make a bunch of fire balloons, and fill the trunk with baseball bats. Tayoma calls Yulia to apologize for his outburst at the station and asks her to join them, but Yulia turns him down. At Yulia's home, Hawken explains he needs to take the shilk to the ship, but Yulia points out they'll have to wait until midnight to avoid the guards. Hawken meets Yulia's dog and uses the shilk to heal the pet's sick eyes, explaining his technology is so good that his race has almost achieved immortality. Lubov finds them together in the room and thinks Hawken is pretty weird, so Yulia pretends he's just a foreign friend. Afterward they have dinner together and Hawken copies everything Yulia does, thus she takes the chance to trick him into eating something spicy, which he hates. They also watch the news on TV and discover that, thanks to the security cameras, the military has put Hawken's face out as a wanted man. When Lubov enters the kitchen, Yulia has to cover the TV to hide the truth and lets her grandmother think Hawken is her boyfriend. At that moment, Valentine arrives at the area with a whole military convoy, so Lubov distracts him while Yulia and Hawken run away. They go to see Gleb, who is watching a viral video made by Tayoma and his gang. It spreads the message that the aliens and the military suck and that the civilians should take back what belongs to them. 
Hawken borrows some new clothes and Yulia remembers the concert tickets, realizing the crowd would be the perfect place to hide. At the concert, Yulia teaches Hawken how to dance and have fun. In return, Hawken touches Yulia's hands and connects their minds to show her what his amazing planet looks like. He explains that he wasn't supposed to make contact with humans and that the army shot his ship down. He also says humans shouldn't approach his ship because it will cause it to self-destruct to stop people from stealing their advanced technology. Their little chat is seen by one of the gang members, who immediately calls Tayoma to let him know of Yulia's betrayal. Later in the evening, Yulia takes Hawken back into the quarantine zone through the abandoned building. Hawken notices Yulia smokes and disregards the fact it's harmful because she loves it, so he takes the cigarette to try to understand what love and death are like together. Touched by his philosophy, Yulia kisses Hawken before letting him go. Suddenly Yulia gets a call from Tayoma and decides to break up with him, but it turns out the gang is already there and they just were tracking the call. They begin beating Hawken up for stealing their leader's girl and Hawken doesn't defend himself because of protocol. The shilt falls from his pockets and the gang takes it, causing Yulia to beg for mercy and Tayoma hits her for it. This makes Hawken immediately react and finally fight, easily knocking everyone down in seconds. One of the guys tries to shoot Hawken, but Yulia pulls at his arm and the bullet hits one of his friends instead, killing him. The guards hear the shot and come to investigate, so the gang runs away. Hawkins Shil can't resurrect the dead, and he and Yulia end up being arrested. Once the gang is safe, Tayoma tells them to spread the news that the alien has killed their friend and to invite everyone to riot with them. Furious people from all over Moscow leave their classes and their jobs to gather with the gang, and Tayoma riles them up by offering a speech about their right to reclaim Earth and avenge their dead loved ones. He also shares all the weapons from his car. The school teacher tries to make people see reason and how there's more going on than meets the eye, but he's ignored. The furious crowd rushes to the quarantine zone, starting fires and breaking the entrance with a car. At first the military simply defends the line without opening fire, but this only gives the crowd the chance to push more and break through the barricade. While a fierce fight begins between soldiers and civilians, Tayoma returns to the hideout and endures the pain of putting on the exoskeleton. With all the violence going around it, the ship releases several AI-controlled exoskeletons to defend itself, hurting anyone that dares come close. Meanwhile at the base, Hawken apologizes to Yulia for getting her into this mess and kisses her. When Valentine arrives and sees the Shilk, Yulia tells him the truth about Hawken and blames him for everything because she knows it was the army that shot down the ship. Valentine refuses to help them because they can't know if they can trust an alien, but his speech is interrupted by a call from the Prime Minister, who wants him to use full military power to stop the violent crowd. Yulia can't believe this is becoming a small war, so when Valentine hugs her to apologize for leaving her again, Yulia steals her father's gun and threatens to end things for herself. Valentine has no choice but to allow her to leave with Hawken in an army truck. While Valentine takes his men to control the crowd, Hako and Yulia try to reach the spaceship, only to find their way blocked by Tayoma wearing the armor. He crashes the car and knocks Yulia out, so Hawken has no choice but to fight him. The alien's human-like body can't defend itself well enough from the powerful exoskeleton, but before Tayoma can claim victory, Yulia wakes up and hits him with the car. Then Yulia rushes to reunite with Hawken while Tayoma comes out of the exoskeleton because it's lost an arm. While Valentine shows the AI armors that humanity means no harm, Tayoma refuses to give up and steals a rifle to shoot Hawken and Yulia. Valentine sees this and immediately orders his men to arrest Tayoma while the other aliens bring Hawkins and Yulia's bodies into the ship, since they're hurt but not dead. Valentine follows them and discovers his daughter is being put inside a healing pod, and while the couple is treated, the ship's AI explains the aliens are prohibited to visit Earth because it's considered an extremely aggressive social environment. However considering Yulia's sincere love for Hawken, there may be hope to revisit that rule in the future. Once she's been healed, Yulia says goodbye to Hawken and watches the spaceship finally leave the planet while releasing the excess water. Sometime later, the quarantine zone is open and everyone goes back to their normal lives. Yulia thinks about the fact an alien believed in humans more than humans believe in themselves and wonders what that says about humanity. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.